What's up guys? Today we're going to continue working with databases in Django, particularly focusing on what it means to be a relational database, the relational aspect of this database. Before we get into that, let's do a bit of recap and expansion on last time. So let's take a look at, at this example model that I have here for you. So let's say we want to model, um, we want to store different types of programming languages inside of our database. So I might have a name field, okay, I'll use a char field for that, which basically means strings um, <clears throat> to hold the different names. And I'll set its max length to 30. And I'll set it, uh, I'll set its name to be the primary key by setting primary key equals true here. We'll get, we'll get to what that means inside of a moment. Um, and another field I might have for this is the paradigm. The paradigm is going to be stuff like functional or imperative, or maybe it's even a mixed paradigm. Um, so to do this, I'll set, uh, I'll also make this a string, okay, by using char field, and I'll set its max length to ten. And I'll do an interesting thing here. I'll make use is use of the choices um, attribute here uh, uh, by setting it to this kind of weird tuple of tuples here, and Basically, what I'm going to do, and you, you check out documentation on choices here for details on it, but basically the way choices work is I can give it um, this this list of tuples here where uh, you give it a uh, identifier to actually be stored in a database and a human readable version on the right hand side. And you're basically going to limit what the strings could be, what, what choices you actually have to insert into this uh, table. So if I if I try and insert something that isn't one of these choices here, then it'll throw an error and it'll know how to um, hold a shortened version of it like FRIM or MX inside of the database and how to show you the human readable version of that um, correspondingly. And I'm also going to make use of another neat feature that you could you could use um, with basic with any field, any of these attributes, although I often choose not to, um, which is the default field. So I'm going to specify a default for if you don't specify what this um, field is when creating the database. And I could have done the same thing here for like this Boolean field. I could have typed in default equals true. You do that with any field here. Um, so the, the, the second this third field here, the Boolean field is going to check whether or not it's an OO language. Okay, so let's go right to our um, terminal here and let's go right to our Django, uh, CD into our Django templates uh, repo. And I've created, if, if, you're, if it's up to date, uh, do a git pull just to make sure if it's not up to date. I've created a relational models project for us inside there that is that we can play around with and this relational models project is going to have a bunch of it has an app examples and if I take a look inside of that examples app it's going to have a models.py with a bunch of these models already predefined for us okay so here's my example model here You'll notice at the at the top of my project here, I'm also going to have this manage uh, that where the manage.py is. I also put a script here, populate underscore db.py. So if we take a look at that script, you can see that this is script for. Um, actually inserting a bunch of objects uh, entries into our database for us to give us like a, an initial database to play around with. Okay, so um, before we get to inserting stuff into the database, so you see here's examples of inserting stuff and here's another example. Um, before we actually get to that, remember we have to actually create our database. So just having these classes here um, this is just kind of a, a template that Django works off of for like what your actual SQL database should be. If we want to actually create the database, we're going to have to go to our project, make sure our Django environment is activated, and we're going to run two commands. We're going to run python manage.py. Um, we're going to run make migrations. 
okay? And then this is going to kind of um, make the models, okay? It's gonna generate a bunch, of, a bunch of work for making the models. And then when, and when we want to actually apply those models, then we have to run Python manage.py migrate. And this will actually apply them, okay? And last time I showed you a third step for actually showing what the SQL um, code is that it actually prints out, but we really just need to do these two steps to um, get our database generated and working with. Okay, and now once you've done that, now we could run this populate underscore db script to actually insert stuff into our database. So the way you insert stuff into your database, there's actually two ways. So what you can do is you can just create an instance of the object, and then you have to save that instance. The other way that's a little bit of a shortcut for that is um, you call the class, you get its attributes, um, its objects attribute, and then you call the create method on it. And you provide it with the same um, parameters you would provide um, when creating an instance of this class. And it what it will do is it'll create the instance and automatically save it for you. So it saves a little bit of time. And it's how I chose to populate the programming language database here. Okay, so you could do this manually from the shell, okay? Or you can write a script to do it for you if you wanna if you wanna generate a bunch of stuff. If you already have a database going on and you want to like clear your database and start from scratch um, without deleting all the migrations, like the really hard trick I showed you last time, just run python manage.py flush. Okay, it'll prompt you to be like, are you sure you want to do this? You can say yes. Okay, and now you could start with a fresh database. So at, if at any point like you you want you want to update this script to have like an initial database to work with and you just want to kind of clear your database and go back and try it again, you can just do this. Okay, but once you actually want to populate your database, so notice we have this script, populate.py in the same directory as our manage.py. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up our shell, and we're gonna say from populate underscore db, import, we'll just import everything. Could have just, just import populate because it's the only function there. And then I'll call my function populate. Okay. And so I'll take this populate function, call it. If everything goes well, uh, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't see anything. And then we can check that it works by doing something like programming language. Oh, we're gonna have to import. So, we, so we'll say from examples.models. Okay, so all of our, all of these models this models file that I'm looking at right here is under um, examples, okay, models.py. So I'm gonna say from examples.models um, and we'll import everything from there, import everything. So now we'll have access to this programming language class and so we'll say programming language dot objects dot all. And let's look at all the objects we got going on. Okay, and you'll see it lists this query set before, which is basically a object wrapper around a list of our different programming language objects. And you'll notice now when it lists the programming language object, it'll list in brackets the name that I specified for the programming language. And you may be wondering, why is it listing the name and just the name and not you know the paradigm or is OO? And that's because like I mentioned before, I made the name the primary key here, okay, by setting primary key equals true in the keyword creation there, okay? Okay, so this way we were, able, we were able to create a bunch of objects. Let's say we want to delete an object, uh, or sorry, well, let's say we want to update an object. So to do that, we're going to um, get an object somehow from some sort of query. Um, let's use the get command 
And remember before I told you to only ever use the get command on a um, primary key? I'll explain in a second why, but it'll be safe to use the get command on name because name is our primary key here. So we could do something like um, Python equals programming language dot objects dot get name equals the string Python. Okay, equals Python. See, this is the programming language object with name Python. Okay, and let's say we want to update part of it. So um, Python, I, I, I specified its paradigm as um, I am for imperative here, okay? Uh, but Python 3 has a bunch of functional features now. So really it's becoming more of a mixed paradigm language. So let, let's update it. Let's say Python dot Paradigm equals MX for mixed. Okay. And now here's the key to updating stuff. So, so when we want to update something, we just retrieve the object instance and we just start changing uh, different, we just ch start changing attributes the way we would set attributes in Python normally, right? Uh, on an object. But Let's say, let's query our database again. So let's look through our, our language table and say, all right, let's get objects. Let's get the Python object again. And let's check out what its paradigm is. Oh no, its paradigm is still I am. Hmm, what's going on here? So the trick is, after we're done updating our object instance, we need to save it back to the database. We have to run python.save now. Okay, so after we've done, we could have changed the paradigm attribute. I could have made like is o equal to false or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna change whatever, and then I would have to save it again um, in order for it to actually take. And now when I go back, Okay, now it's actually saved back to the database with that change made. So you have to remember to do that save, otherwise you actually don't perform the change. Okay, another thing, um, the mortal enemy of the save method, now that I've taught you that, is the delete method. So uh, this is pretty straightforward. Just grab the object instance, and if you want to get rid of it from the database, instead of calling save on it, you call delete on it, okay? And yeah, that's that's a pretty straightforward offer. Now it does get a bit more complicated when relations get involved, but I'll go over that in a bit. Okay, so last time we went over querying and I showed you how to use filter and um, besides just get, which I specified should only be working on a primary key, I showed you how to use filter and exclude, which you can do to kind of just query stuff by attribute and it'll return a uh, another query set, which will be kind of a list of all of the entries that match whatever you're looking for. And so we can do something like, uh, just a refresher, programming um, language dot um, objects dot filter. And we could filter for say, all of the objects that have paradigm equal to um, imperative, right? And it'll return to us a query set with all of these different um, programming languages that have the imperative paradigm. Now we can make our, we can make filter and exclude and even get as well, um, a bit more powerful by using these field lookups. So some of the most common field lookups, um, the one, the one we've been using by default is this exact. So what you do is you take the attribute that you're looking for and you extend it by adding um, these two underscores, and then you could say stuff like the exact is the default one. It's already so, it's already there. Um, you could have also done something like I exact to be like, well, we can look for this, but case insensitive, so we don't we don't care about uppercase or lowercase this time. Okay, uh, a particularly useful one is contains and I contains. Okay, so th this way 
um, we could search for something that just contains part of what we're looking for here. So I can do something like, let's say I'm searching for name. And I say contains, and uh, let's might as well do I contains C. Okay, and this way I'm able to find, well, there's both the C and the C++ programming language here. And there's many more field lookups. I'm not gonna go over each of them individually. You could, you could reference the Django API. Um, once you get the hang of using one of them, the rest of them um, kind of fall into line. Uh, so there's other stuff uh, like greater than, like if you're, if you're filtering over an integer field or of some sort, you would check for every integer that's greater than a value this way. Or starts with, instead of just contains, you could, you could specify that starts with and ends with and um, even ranges. Um, there's all sorts of sorts of queries could be accomplished by these field lookups. So it's a good idea to keep this um, reference. Um, you, you're going to want to use it to do um, all sorts of more complicated querying. Okay, so um, I kept kind of mentioning um, primary keys. So what are primary keys exactly? Primary keys are a way of specifying a unique identifier for your entry. So the idea here is that if I specify that, let's say the, um, the name of my programming language is a primary key, that means that I can only have um, one programming language named Python and one programming language named C, and so on and so on and so on. Let's say I try and create another programming language, um, programming language objects create name equals Python and um, let's say I have another Python language and it's OO zero false. Okay, if I try and do this, it'll it'll the database will actually throw an error, an error at runtime. When, whenever I try and execute this in the database, it'll tell me unique constraint failed. And this has to do with the fact that a primary key has to be unique in the database. And that way it's a unique way of accessing it, it in the database. And this is why I was saying before the get method, which should, which will throw an error if you, um, if it finds multiple objects, should usually only ever be used when looking up a primary key. Because if you're using the get method to look up a primary key, you know that it's either not going to be able to find it, or it's going to only find one object that way. Okay. Uh, so this is also a read-only value. It doesn't let you change it after creation. In fact, what happens if I try and change it, so like let's say I try and look up now, so I could do, um, say I, I try, I get Python here, objects, let's get, so I get this Python object, and I try and change python.name equals Python to capital Python, right? And I save that. So it doesn't throw an error, which is actually an annoying thing. It probably should. But instead of throwing an error, what it actually does is now if we um, list our programming languages, so we do objects.all, you'll see what it actually did is instead of changing Python, okay, to be a new name Python, it just added another Python object with the new name Python capital Python key. Okay. So this would be a good opportunity to use delete to get rid of that. Okay. So be careful of that. Don't try and change the primary key because when you go to save it, what it's going to do is instead of actually changing the entry, it's just going to create a new entry with that new primary key. Okay, um, you may have noticed before that sometimes uh, in my in my last tutorial, I, I created some 
classes that didn't have primary keys, every table in an SQL database will have a primary key. If you do not specify the primary key, what it does is it automatically creates this field right here. Okay. So, um, in this model, I, I kind of automatically, I, I explicitly added this field, but you don't actually need to, if I didn't put this field here and let's say I commented this out as I actually did in, um, my code here. Okay. I didn't have anything. I just had this test model and all it had was a name and no primary key, it automatically puts this field here. Okay. So it's automatically there. And the way this field works, it's an integer field and it auto increments. So basically it'll, every time you create a new instance and save it to the database of test model, it's going to auto increment, um, in here. So I could, I could list, um, if I, if I list, uh, test model, for the objects, see, I created, um, two test model objects here and it just kind of auto increments the ed, ed here, ID, the identity. And so I could, I could use that and it is called at ID all the time by default. So you can say get equals ID one and it will return this object. Okay. So if you don't specify a primary key, that doesn't mean it doesn't have a primary key. It'll just automatically make this primary key for you. Okay. And now we get to relations. So this is where the true power of um, a relational database co comes in. It allows you to specify how tables are relating to each other. So relations are going to be constructed when a model contains a reference to another model. Okay. And there's going to be four types of um, possible relations. So many to one and one to many are, are, is kind of a, a two and one relationship, um, depending on how you're looking at things or at your perspective. Uh, there's many to many and one to one. So let's go over each of these individually. So a many to one or one to many, depending on your perspective relation is going to be constructed through the foreign key field. Okay. You're going to provide a field with a foreign key. So a good example of this is let's say we're trying to build a database and we're trying to store companies. Okay. And, um, each of those companies is going to have a a um, bunch of different employees. And the way we'll reference this is that, um, for every employee, um, will only work for one company. So in our theoretical database, it's impossible for the employee to have two jobs working for two different companies. I know that's a little dumb, but just stick with it. So every employee will only work for one company. Okay. So when I make a foreign key here, I'm only going to be able to specify one company in this foreign key. Okay. But when I create, so I'll create a company like this, but when I create employees, so I'll do stuff like objects.employees.create and I'll reference the company to this company I created, but I could create multiple employees to this same company. So this is why it's, it's a, um, many, uh, to one or one to many, depending on how you're looking at it, that every employee will have one company but companies can have many employees. Okay. And I made a little example here for you. So, uh, I made some sample employees with companies here. And if you go to my views.py and examples, I have one template view. And this template, th this one view that I called template view, what it does is it finds all of the companies and then it constructs a dictionary of company names. And then for each company, a list of all of its employees. Okay, and I get this list by filtering the employees table for company equals company and using list to convert into a list. So it's going to be a dictionary where the key is going to be the company name 
and the values are going to be a list of employee objects. And I give this to a context to a models.dj HTML. And if I open that up, which will be under um, relational models, examples, templates, models.dj HTML, I'll show you how to, you can iterate over a dictionary by doing, so companies is a dictionary. And so if I say companies.items, then company will be the, comp the key of the dictionary, which will just be the um, company name here. So that'll just be a string. So I could render the, co the company in an H3 header and employees will be a list. Okay, that'll be the values to the dictionary that I'm entering over. So it'll be a list of all of these employees objects. So then I can iterate over that again and make a list of all of employees per company and render that inside my HTML. So it's actually, let's exit out of the shell. And actually if we run the server, okay, so now we can go to that. So if we go to localhost, I'm just serving it from e slash Mac ID. You can see this example of I'll list it. It's able to retrieve every company from the database and list every employee per that company that way. Okay. So if you need an example of how to do something similar to this, where it's like you look up a, um, you look up things in your database and you want to find every foreign key referencing, um, that that item in your database this is this would be how you do it okay now an important one important thing to note about this foreign key you'll notice when i defined the foreign key okay i specified what company is referencing okay or what what um other table it's referencing I also specified this on delete and I put models, I put this cascade on delete. So when you reference something with a foreign key, there's the question of, um, let's say inside this example, what happens when an employee is referencing a company and, but then that company gets deleted from the company table. Okay. So like in this instance, this, this employee references super awesome Inc. Okay. What happens if Super Awesome Inc. gets deleted? What happens to this field here? What does this get set to? So there's a few options here. One, which, which is kind of the default um, go-to that I would say is to cascade. That means if Super Awesome Inc. gets deleted, then every employee that references Super Awesome Inc. also gets deleted. Another option is you, if you set it to protect, then when you try and delete Super Awesome Inc, it'll actually throw an error. And basically the only way to delete Super Awesome Inc will be to first delete all of the employees referencing Super Awesome Inc and then delete Super Awesome Inc itself, okay? Now, the two other options, two other final options, um, are more complicated and I actually recommend avoiding them because they kind of hide errors. But one is to um, just allow the reference to be set to null, okay? Now to do this, you actually need to specify when you're creating the foreign key after delete, you'd have to actually specify set null, equal, uh, um, null is equal to true, right? Um, so you would have to actually specify inside of your models.py okay you would have to actually specify in your foreign key null equals true okay i don't recommend doing that um, the other option is if you set a default to something so you could set this to default company default equals and i would i would need an instance of company of some sort um, to set to be the default um, in order to do this. Um, it'll set it to that default instead, okay? 
I don't. I, I recommend avoiding unless you really know what you're doing. Avoiding these two options because they kind of like um, hide errors a lot of the time, potential bugs. Okay. Now another field type is the many to many field. So this is going to be similar. So the, so the way you can think of um, the many to many field is the foreign key field is saying okay. Here's a company, um, one company that you could reference. Okay, so when you create an employee, you can you specify the one company that the employee references to, right? The many to many field, the way you can think of it is that is like a list. So the general way you'll go about it is you'll um, create a, say in this example, you'll have a student and a class tables, okay? And students could be in many classes, and classes can have many students, hence many to many. And so we'll reference um, what classes students are in from the class table. We'll say for every student, we'll have this classes many to many field, which you can think of this field as being basically like a list of classes that the student might be in. And what you're going to do is you'll create a um, instance by either creating the instance and then saving or using the dot objects dot create method. And the field will initially be say the empty list equivalent. And you'll add to that field by using um, accessing the classes attribute and using the dot add method. Okay. So I have an example of that um, in my populate DB script for the classes object here. I created two classes, CS1XA3 and CS1MD3. Okay, and then I would create some students, like say a good student one, and I would add as a student one dot classes dot add class one. Should be my class one that I created over here. Okay, or I can add multiple classes at once like this. So student four here, I added class one and class two here. Okay, so you can think of it like adding um, to a list. The many to many field, it's, it's like a list this way. Okay, and you can query it. So I did, I, I did something actually quite similar um, where I created, I gave you an example of, let's say um, you want to be able to list all of the classes and all of the students in this classes, in these classes. You could do it roughly the same way that I was doing things in the foreign key where I decided to just construct a dictionary of class name and I just looked up a list using filter of all of the students that have that class. Okay, so it ends up, that's quite similar. You could use it quite similar to how you would use a, um, a foreign key. The main difference is that now you're allowed to add multiple, okay, um, entries to this field instead of just one entry. Okay, another interesting thing you could do here, um, which you could do with the foreign key or the um, many-to-many -many field, is let's say you want to reference a um, field itself, okay, a, a model itself inside of itself. It, so we, it's kind of a recursive field in the sense. So for example, let's say you're creating a um, table to hold different people, okay, a person table, and you every person has a name and it has a list of friends, okay? And friends are just gonna be other persons here. You could use the self keyword. You wanna specify it as a string here for some stupid reason. You could use the self keyword um, to say basically that, well, this many to many field is referencing the same class here. And I have an example of populating that as well, where I create a few different people and I add them some friends. Okay. 
And I have a bit more of a complicated example of using filter here that uses something um, that I didn't bring up about query string before. Um, so what I did is I looked up using the get method, two people, Joe and Jill, and I wanted to find everybody who's friends of Joe or who's friends of Jill. So to do this, what I did is inside of the filter object, what I did my um, comparison for friends equals something, I made use of this Q function, which I imported from Django.db.models. And the Q function allows you to use or or and here. So that I could have used the vertical bar for or or the ampersand for and. And this way I could say Q and I could list one query like friends is equal to Joe or Q friends is equal to Joe. Okay. It's just a little bit of an annoyance that we have to call this Q function first to use the or, and we can't just say friends is equal to Joe or friends is equal to Joe. Okay. Okay, so the final type of relation we should go over is a one-to-one -one field. Okay, so this, this is the situation where um, we have a president and it's it, we're going to specify this similarly to how we specified the foreign key field where we're just going to specify one thing. Okay. We're just going to specify the president just re references one. Oh, this should be country, not class. I made a little error here, um, but it specifies one field country. This should be country here. It's correct inside of my models.py here. We reference country here. Okay, and you may know sometimes I reference it as a string, and sometimes I reference it as the class itself. Um, Python actually lets you do both. If you, if I were to put this class before I defined the country class, then I would have to do it as a string. But that's just that's just a little trick that that um, Python is able to do. Okay. Um, but yeah, a one-to-one -one field of countries. So every president is going to belong to one country, and every country is going to have one president. Okay? And a neat thing about the one-to-one -one field is that you can use the reference to another country as the primary key. Okay, you can use the one-to-one -one field reference as the primary key here, uh, which, which is kind of a cool thing. So I even have some examples. Oops. Side um, populate db, where I create two countries, Coolville and Lame Zone, and they have presidents Johnny Chill and Loser McGuy, respectively. And one interesting little thing, um, you don't really ever have to do this, but just a cool thing to point out is you can implicitly define one-to-one -one fields by taking advantage of model inheritance. So um, I could I could have done this same um, thing with the on delete equals cascade um, automatically there by just making president a subclass of country. Okay, so the interesting thing to um, note about a one-to-one -one key versus a foreign key. So first of all, a one-to-one -one key, you can now use the um, the one-to-one -one field reference as a primary key. You can't do that with the foreign key reference, okay? Um, the other thing is that the um, it, it enforces another unique constraint, okay, that if I try and add, let's say, if I try and recreate my example from before, if you remember, um, where I had employees and I, I kept creating new employees that are referencing the same company. If I try and do the same thing with presidents, it'll throw an error. So if I try and recreate president.objects.create country equals the same country over and over again, 
it'll it'll throw a unique constraint error okay which we would which we would expect out of something that's a primary key if you remember since i made this primary key Okay, and that goes over um, our relational databases for today. Next week, we'll be covering user authentication with the database. Take it easy, guys.